can still go to the park today on the right through the trail. Brother Richie, I was in a dry place. Uh-huh. I got back in the truck. I cranked it up. Oh, Brother Richie jumped up. I said, oh, thank you, Jesus. About three miles down the road. Exactly, Taylor. Right back to zero. I was back to the old McDonald's scenario then. Dang, it was this time to do this way. Truck, I, and I'm, I'm talking to my truck. I'm talking to God. Why? So then, oh, I told my wife, I said, I had to come out to, what's the game show and phone a friend? So I called my, my good friend Mark Tugger as a mechanic. He didn't answer his phone. And, <laughs> so I prayed some more. I got back in the truck, cranked it up. All pressure come up. I'm like, okay, this about three miles from here, it goes back. My phone rings, and this is my good friend Mark Tucker, and I told him my dilemma. He said, uh, what's the last time you changed on the truck? <laughs> I didn't want to, I'm afraid from my truck. I don't, and so he tell me, I'd, I'd go buy an oil filter, put it up on the curb, put an oil filter on it, and pour it, pour it all in there and crank it up, and all pressure just like it's supposed to be. And, um, and it's been fine ever since. And, and said all that to get to a point, sometimes when we pray, you know, I've heard, I've heard preachers say, you know, you've got to put, you got to put legs on your prayer. Sometimes we have to do something. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes we in that dry place, <clears throat> and sometimes it's because we hadn't made that next step. Well, so since brother, had I took care of my truck to start with, I wouldn't have been in that dry place. Now Elijah's in a different. He's in a different place though. He's doing exactly what God has told him to do. Mm-hmm. I can only imagine. Him sitting there at that brook. I don't know how long he was there. I don't get rain for three years and six months. It don't say how long he was there before the water starts drying up. Sister Martha, I can imagine him looking around when, when he gets there. There ain't no water. He's like, oh, I'm not praying like this. I, you know, I'm right here where you sent me. You've been feeding me. You've been watering me now. Kind of like the guy in the parachute. I let the ravens ain't gonna show up in no meat. But what Elijah didn't know, God was preparing him right. for an abundance. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, if, if we've never been dry, we wouldn't know what it feel like to be soaked. Mm-hmm. I found it out yesterday too. You ever try to change a, a hose bit with water on? With about 70 pounds of water pressure, it don't work real good. Just in case y'all can try that next thing. Um, but there were so many things that happened after Elijah after the brook dried up. You know, the, the word of the Lord told him, the word told him, said, uh, told him where to go, there's going to be a widow woman there to sustain him. Mm-hmm. That's, you've been fed by ravens, now you're going to a, a woman's house you don't know, they don't have anything. But yet she's going to feed you. That's, that's pretty cool. The, the, the lady's son dies. And she says, well, you the man of God. He goes in there and he prays for the child. Brings him back in there. That's, that's pretty cool. Then he gets involved with the prophets of Baal and Jezebel. Brother Charles preached on his the weekend, I think he touched on it. You know how, how Elijah, he mocked and he, you know, got, well, maybe your God's asleep. Maybe he's going, maybe he's going to trip or something. And then he calls down fire from heaven. I don't think he could ever done this had he not been to the dry place. You know, it seems like when, the ritual, when, I, when, when you get in a dry place, Maybe that's when you call on God more. Right. I've heard Brother Richie say, you know, if the only time you talk to God when you're in trouble, maybe the reason you stay in trouble. So I try to talk to him a whole bunch. <laughs> Just kind of cover all my bases. Yeah. You know, don't, don't never know. Right. All right, after, after he called down the fire, 
And not only consume the sacrifice, consume the water. Now, they still in a drought. And he's wasting water, poured on the sacrifice just to get burned up. After he does all that, then he kills 450 prophets. All the while, God is preparing him for abundance. If you turn to the 18th chapter, in the 41st verse, it says that Elijah said to Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. All right. Amen. <laughs> Not only was the rain coming, it's going to be a bunch of rain. Mm -hmm. And then, to top it all off, and, and this kind of stood out more with me than, which is kind of crazy that this would stand out more than bringing a dead child back to life. When the rain, before the rain started, he told Ahab to hitch up your horses. Yeah. Ahab's got a chariot and horses. And Elijah, he ties his, I don't know how they, like, they pulled it up and tied the knot to let it run. And he outrun the horses. Now, I may be wrong, but I don't know many people who outrun a horse. What I'm here to tell you tonight, God is, if, if you're in a dry place tonight, God is preparing you for something better. Right. Mm -hmm. If come on. Sister Brenda, I, I, I prayed and prayed and prayed and feel like feel like I'm in God's will. Feel like I'm doing what God wants me to do. And still still struggling. I hadn't been fed by the ravens and I hadn't had to drink water from the brook. But I know what it's like to be in a dry place. I know what it's like to feel like I'm sure Elijah felt like God just, just had forsaken him. He just, you dropped me off here. But he's getting prepared for something. We right. never know what it's like to be full of up and empty. And I know Brother Charles preached, I think it was the first service of the year, how 2014 was going to be something great. And to me, this, when God gave me this, it goes right along with that. Well, David, I'm, I'm tired of the dry place. Amen. I believe God has been preparing me. That's the only way I know to say it. You know, I, I'm sure he's preparing each and every one of you, but I know what I feel. I don't, I don't know I don't know how your mind operates, how, how you feel in your heart, but I feel tonight that God has He knows He knows what we're gonna do. You know, when we go before we go through the dry place, He knows what we're gonna do. Mm -hmm. We have to see what we're gonna do. We have to hang on to the blessing gets here. I, I wanna be like the like the, the man in the Bible was wrestling with an angel. I ain't trying to lose you bless me. Brother yeah. Joseph, I'm going to hold on for the abundance. I believe I believe we're right on the, right on the verge of it. I believe that, that we're fixing to see things at this church that so far we've just dreamt about. Amen. You know, I, I, we, we've talked a lot about the service when I received the Holy Ghost and how, how strong the power of God was. It's still the same God. Mm -hmm. and, and it's been a long... 2013, Brother David, was a, was a year of dry spells. A long... Even back to... For it to go back to 2012, it's been dry. God is preparing us for abundance. You can 
Amen. Bring your own brother to shield yourself from it, or you just get under the spout where the glory's coming out. Yeah.